the apple watch is all about emotional connection they are really trying to like every hour or couple of hours tell you to stand up do this do that breathe now what they're trying to do is create that connection with the person inside it's not so much about just the raw functionality of it can count calories it can count steps it can count altitude first it has to solve a real problem but then the emotional connection makes it a lifelong partner or a, a product that you will use forever my next guest on the 1% project is sabir bhatia sabir is the co-founder of hotmail and shoreel sabir and his co-founder kicked off hotmail with 300000 and later on sold to microsoft for 400 million sabir believes the success of hotmail or any sort of blaze in the core idea of the business and the problem it solves in this conversation he talks about how to validate a problem worth solving why does a consumer need to have an emotional connect to your product why was hotmail a success why do we need shoreel and can founders outsource sales if you have any feedback about this conversation speaker or topic recommendations you can drop me a line at 1%.live you can also join the 1% projects newsletter at 1%.live to get the show notes and the key highlights of this conversation and every other conversation you talk about that entrepreneurs should be solving a problem and there are multiple problems to solve but how do you know or how do you assess which problem is worth solving it's a very good question so there are all kinds of things that can make human life better simple things like procedural sometimes it is just observing the environment around you and seeing how people do things entrepreneurship doesn't really come out of a lab like people think it hmm. it does it's uh, that's the old world of technology where some breakthrough technology comes out of a lab it that's usually not the case most entrepreneurship comes from exchanging ideas in coffee shops talking to other people about it getting their opinions seeing what might work and what might not work and having some instinct about where the world is headed so for example in my you know simple world view i have analyzed how and why companies became successful let's take apple for for example it had its fortunes were declining when steve jobs came the first thing he did was he cut down i don't know there were 17 lines of product that apple made and every one of them was losing money mm. so we cannot do that let's consolidate let's focus on one thing and then he focused on the imac and all energies design effort was on just one thing marketing is we are going to make this sleek new computer called the imac and in addition to worrying about the technology speak which is all of the high speed processors in there how much memory he just said we've got to appeal to the mass population which is make it simple for them make it make an emotional connection with them and simplify and he had to resurrect the apple brand so that was what stabilized the apple ship if you will when he got back then the breakthrough idea that really caused apple to get out of its mess was the ipod and what did he do with the ipod let's just think about instinctively what did he do he saw that people were using mp3 players there were 40 different mp3 players these players had two problems one is you had to go- listen to songs sequentially you couldn't jump to any song you couldn't navigate your songs list and do the number of songs were very small 10 15 20 whatever he solved those two problems by doing a simple thing let's put an operating system on an ipad ipod so simple os that helps you navigate to the right song through a track wheel or whatever trackpad and the other is you know let's make the number of songs so large that your entire music library can be stored over there that was the innovation so what problem did he solve he solved the problem of and music makes an emotional connection with individuals so he gave individuals the power to store all the music and navigate to whatever and ease of use obviously has always been apple's forte 
and that's what caused Apple to start taking off with the iPod. And then what did he do with the iPhone? He really took all of those music libraries, made it available on an iPhone and also put a camera on it and ease of use of the operating system compared to what existed in those days. So it's just simple philosophies of that kind that today has made Apple the most valuable company on the planet or one of the five most valuable companies on the planet. So you have to solve a people-oriented problem. Look at what Uber did. He was looking, waiting for a taxi cab and he couldn't find a taxi cab. He said, I'm willing to pay extra money. I have this phone. My location can be conveyed to somebody. Why can I not send a message out to all taxi cabs in the location? Whoever is free, come pick me up. I'll give you an extra 20 bucks. That yeah. has led to Uber today completely upending the entire transportation business the world over. You, know, you don't see taxi cabs anymore in any place in San Francisco or in Washington, D.C., except for New York, you don't see them anywhere because everything is taken over by Uber. Same with Google, what they did with search. There were 27 search engines before they came around, but they were not automated. People were building directories mm -hmm. with hand. Yahoo was building hand-built directories. And here he came and said, you know what, that is simply not scalable with the web. As the web scales, we need to get to information as quickly as possible. You know, over a trillion dollars in market cap 20 years later. Ideas and genuine original ideas are the ones that really change the world. And they all solve, all of these are examples of solving problems and that exist. But you just need to have a foresight and you need to know if you can use technology and current sets of technology to solve these problems. Do you think that a product for a service to scale to the level that Uber, Hotmail, Airbnb did and have, there needs to be an emotional connect of the consumer with the product and the service. Or it just needs to solve a simple problem. The emotional connect is important, but first it has to solve a problem. And then what are human beings but a collection of emotions, really? So the emotional connection makes it that much more interesting. For example, the Apple Watch is all about emotional connection. They are really trying to like every hour or a couple of hours tell you to stand up, do this, do that, breathe now. What they're trying to do is create that connection with the person inside. It's not so much about just the raw functionality of it can count calories, it can count steps, it can count altitude. So first it has to solve a real problem, but then the emotional connection makes it a lifelong, if you will, uh, partner or a, a product that you will use forever once you're used to something. And that is what Amazon, for example, has done brilliantly, that they made sure that the number one thing on their mind was not profits. It was mm -hmm. user experience that the users always got the cheapest prices. They always got their packages delivered and within two or three days. So once you have had that experience a few times, the nth time, the fifth time or the sixth time, I don't even look at any other site. When I think of buying a product, I look at Amazon. That kind of mind share is what companies should strive towards, not Let's try to make money. How are you going to make money? Everybody is concerned about how you're going to make money. No, it's okay. Don't worry. We will. It's not about making money. It's about earning the trust of the consumer. And once you have earned that trust or goodwill, you build upon it. When you were building Hotmail, and this is in the late 90s, mid 90s, internet was taking off, but it wasn't something that people would have imagined it would be today what it is. But even then, you took the path of actually building a product, which was firstly free, right? At that time, monetization or a paid service was key, which is very unlike now because freemium is the first part usually on a consumer side based business these days. So how did you think of actually making it free? Secondly, why did you think that this is something that would really scale to the level it did? It solved a problem. My 
co-founder Jack Smith and I had email accounts. He had one at AOL. I had one at Stanford.edu, personal accounts. And we found it hard to access these accounts when the company where we were working, both of us were first at Apple, then we joined a company called Firepower Systems. The company installed a firewall around the corporate intranet. And that made it impossible for us to access our personal email accounts. And that's when the idea that make email available on, on the web, that was the, the meat of the idea. We can access any web page on the planet. Why can we not access our email? And of mm. course, the next thing was we can try to monetize it, but we'll grow only a little bit and make some money. Or we can make it free and available to the whole world. And that's what caused, and in those days, luckily for us, because Yahoo was monetizing itself on the number of page impressions, we said we'll generate far more page impressions on email than on a search site or a directory site. And that's what caused us to create Hotmail and give it away for free. And we were able to convince investors that one day this would be a... And literally, when we were... When we started, the entire internet was between 10 and 15 million users. By the time it reached 20 million users, we had a quarter of the internet using web-based email. So 5 million out of 20 million is you know, a big number. And so then, since then, it's just been growing exponentially. Post the acquisition, how did your life transform? One obvious thing was got just way too much attention, at least in the Indian diaspora. Yes. And maybe I wasn't ready for it. I was very young. and But over time, I've learned how to deal with this kind of stardom that I was just thrown in. And I wasn't prepared for it then. But over time, life has taught me. You know, one of the things that I personally realized is that I really got lucky. That a lot of people try. And there is nothing great about this. All I do is I've got to keep trying. And sometimes you meet the right kind of people and the right environment and things just happen. So I didn't used to believe this, but life has taught me that things happen only if they are meant to happen. Indians believe in this whole fatalistic thing. I didn't used to believe in it, but now I do. That even if you have the best of ideas, if it's not meant to happen, if the timing is not right, it will not happen. And if the timing is right, everything just falls into place. You've just launched a new product, Showreel. So tell us about it and why do you think the timing for this product is right? I think the timing is right because of the use of video. At the start of the pandemic, I saw my eight-year-old daughter effortlessly make videos on TikTok for entertainment purposes. And that's what inspired me. And I said, video is a very important, will become a very important mechanism of content consumption. Why is it not being used in business? If for entertainment kids are using video, we should be able to use it in business as well. And mm. if you look at businesses at that time, at the start of the pandemic, suddenly a billion people were out of work globally. The entire tourism industry in so many Asian countries, informal industry just completely wiped out. And 40 million people in India had to leave their homes and go back to their villages. Very, very depressing images to see people. And so I knew that the pandemic would come to an end at some point in time. What was the quickest way to get this, these people back, you know, on their feet? And so the idea initially was to create, help them create a video profile of themselves so they can market themselves better. If you're looking to hire a blacksmith or a plumber or whatever, or even like a software engineer or a marketing specialist or a salesperson, having their video and watching their video you know, will help you make that decision, move forward or not, because everybody has to do some sort of an interview at some point in time. So the first version of this app was to help people make a video profile of themselves, but with text-based questions and cues and prompts. But that, that didn't work very well because mm. people are not actors. Like we are having a conversation today. Instead of a full conversation, if you were just to shoot some text-based questions to me and ask me to record my answers, I wouldn't do that because I'm talking to a machine. Yeah. So then the current version has me asking people questions, asking them 
they like you are interviewing me. I I interviewed them and I asked them standard eight questions. And I tried this with 25 of my friends and family members and I got phenomenal response to the same eight questions that I asked all 25 of them. Details of their professional lives that I did not know, details of their personal lives that I did not know before. And so now this form of communication using video, one to many using video, I think is very effective, not just for making video profiles, professional video profiles. People can make personal video profiles for say the marriage market as an example. Startups, you mentioned startup ideas. I ask a set of eight or seven or eight questions that any startup person who's looking to start a startup should answer himself or herself by you know those uh, answering those eight questions this can be used as a mechanism to conduct video surveys of people so you're in a company of say 100,000 people the ceo wants to know if people feel comfortable enough coming back to work are they vaccinated or not those kind of simple questions why can we not rather than send an electronic survey out ask a video question it it creates for a more emotionally stronger experience somebody is mm. thinking about me and asking me what my opinion is that's the, the use of video and once again coming back to our original discussion it helps the person who's asking the question create an emotional connection with the folks around why do you think india is a great market for this product So India was a great idea because a lot of people that 300 million people were unemployed as a result of the pandemic so that's a huge use case plus in India there is people don't like to respond to answers in text very few Indians are filling out surveys for example but if you talk to them everybody has an opinion right you ask them what's going on in Uh, with omicron everybody has an opinion you ask them covid everybody has an opinion you ask them who should be running for election everybody has an opinion so this is like conversational so i think plus the language it overcomes the language barrier as well right now we've started only in english but it's so easy for us to do it in you know different languages ask the same questions and and get people's responses if sabir bhatia has to build a business today compared to 1996 95 how would it be different actually i'm following similar playbook today than what i did 25 years ago it's only more exciting because the audience mm. is so much bigger but at the same time there is a lot of noise as well it's hard to get noticed and get attention because social media has completely taken over traditional media if you will so traditionally where you would go to traditional media to get your message across and there were a few sources that people would trust today people don't trust those sources everybody trusts their friends and family so you've got to join in the social media kind of bandwagon and of course what you're doing podcasts growing exponentially which is wonderful to have your point come across in a podcast in a clear succinct easy to use kind of manner and then of course you're competing with you know thousands of entrepreneurs the entrepreneurship is no longer a secret there are a lot of people who are working towards solving similar problems so you have more competition uh, but it's exciting to you know be an entrepreneur again and to dust my old suit and go back into the real world and try to do it once again is an entrepreneur a marketer a product guy a pr or communication guy it's all of the above number one thing is you've got to have a good idea that's the without any question that has to be the foundation but after that the person who is in a startup is just selling all the time number 1 number 2 number 3 best qualities that an individual has is the ability to sell to yes. sell to any audience at any time so do you think a founder can outsource selling very difficult because you've got mm. to pitch to investors you've got to manage them you've got to pitch to potential employees you've got to pitch to uh, consumers it's hard to outsource it really it's there are few companies that have been very successful at doing that but most of them are not in the consumer space they have to be mm. in some sort of very deep tech back end kind of space where there is a natural fit for a product that you need for example you've got 
uh, you know, firewall and you, there is a hole, you need a cybersecurity kind of plugin yeah. that everyone will just buy it because it's, you have to use it. But if it's a consumer product, no chance. You've got to be able to sell. Brilliant. Then in that case, a founder has to be a sales guy first. With a brilliant idea. Outside Showreel, outside Hotmail, any product that comes to your mind which has really intrigued you? Obviously, the whole electric car revolution is fantastic to see how it is unfolding. And Tesla, of course, intrigues me a lot. And I think the reason why Tesla is valued at a trillion dollars is not because they are selling more cars than Toyota or any other car company. Mm. It's because they're collecting data. They're collecting data. They're half a million. They've sold only half a million cars in their life. Toyota sells, I don't know, 14 million or 20 million every year. But because those half million cars are actually computers on wheels, they're constantly collecting information and feeding it back to a central computer. Tesla knows more about roads and images of roads than any other car company. And that is why they have more data. So self-driving cars become a reality. They will have the greatest amount of data on roads and road conditions like signs and trees and stop signs and turns and everything, all the quirks of planet Earth. They have more data than any other car company. That's why they are valued at a trillion dollars. This is a great place to close this conversation. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you, Pritish. Thanks a lot.